Some big names, uh, perhaps not in the final today or not in actually competing. Uh, Vavra Khadilek, uh, obviously you know him really well, knew him, but the latest news I had from the, from the Czech team is he's recovering well. He's going to be in, in uh, Augsburg and Hector is going to be in the Worlds as well. Daniel Yeah, Momenti, that's the, the last news we had. Uh, okay. So he should be racing the Worlds. And uh, I think since he's just coming back, he probably decided not to come here and, uh, and train in uh, Prague, which is a really good course to train. But we have got some. Uh, so we have got some top names, I suppose. Who stands out? We've got uh, Sebastian Schubert. He's uh, really, really topping things. Vit Prindus has been very, very fast this year, and Fabien Lefebvre, uh, the American, uh, obviously is doing uh, is doing very well. Yeah. I guess he must, when he was young, he must train in here a fair bit. Oh yeah, when uh, the, the French election were usually like for French team and or Olympic games, like they were often happening in uh, in La Seo before we had the whitewater course built in in Po. So the, the French is no Laseo really well, at 20, least the old ones. 25 years old, Lucien Delfort. You could almost call him a French as well, because French is his native tongue, isn't it? Yeah, I think he's, he's, he's just coming from the other side of the mountains near uh, saint pied de or not too far. But, uh, moved yeah. to Australia, I think he fell in love with the country. Yeah, loves that Australian summer sun. It's going really nicely there. It suits him really well here. I think he's a super light, dynamic guy and seems to be on a pretty good run so far. Had a really good first off stream, pushed against the wall, but the boat kind of flied out of it and uh, well, it's it's looking good. Eh? 68 competitors lined up, 40 made it to the semi finals this morning, and now we're down to the, the fastest 10. Daniel Momenti. Uh, Olympic champion, he's not here. Uh, so a few, uh, a few top names are missing out. Etienne Dayo, compatriot, didn't quite make it to the final. Ooh. And a uh, big, big foot for Peter Kauser, who dislocated his shoulder in London and and who will not compete for the rest of the season. But his surgery went well, so we wish him a really good recovery. Two super tight ups there by Lucien. It's looking really nice so far. Squeezing the exit of 19. That's how to do it. A little bit low in 21. I think some of the K1 men managed to go way tighter in the semi-final, but it's it's a good run so far. Well, putting down it. And he's really good on the finish sprint, Lucien. Yeah, he's a fast sprinter, so a little bit slower than his first run. So 94 and the best time in the semi-final was Boris Neveu with a 92.66. Yeah, he's, he was one second slower, but no penalty, so, and he had a penalty in his semi-final run, so. Indian is one second faster than his first run. Not sure if that is going to be enough or not. Yeah, that up four team is super nice. It's a way to do it. 34 years old, Michael, Michael Kurt from Switzerland. So far, his season's been really awful. Uh, and it's in his own words. He was in uh, 39th in uh, Tatsun, 23rd in Prague. And he was saying he was just really frustrated. Didn't have, uh, didn't give enough time to training. He knows he can, uh, he can do a lot better. He was just frustrating with himself. So it's great to see him in the final today. Work, one of the few paddlers who's actually worked full time as well. Yeah, I think he's. Uh historically had some pretty good results here. I can't remember them all off the top of my head, but I think he's features in the final quite often. Yeah, he's usually really good in La Seo. Yeah. Last year he was eight here. Yeah. Uh, two that looked pretty fast. Yeah, that was really nice and direct. In the offset it looked like he was just doing a straight line. tight here that's where Lucien the really good upstream well, the last couple of years he has put some some exceptional results together he came second in the Europeans in the Olympics he broke his paddle which was a bit of annoying for him I think, yeah, heartbreaking is probably a little bit more accurate <laughs> he's yeah. in touch on the very suite, much in touch yeah and he just did like a really radical left upstream so 
might have gained a little bit of time here. And we saw that on the last up left, Lucien was a little bit low, and it looks like Mike is slightly higher. So he should take the lead. It's going to be tight, but he should take the lead. Well, time of reference is 94. Six strokes. Yeah, nearly a second in, and he's delighted with that. Finally, he, he's put a run together. He knows he did a good run. Now the question is to know if the the other paddlers will manage to go faster than what they did in the semi-final or just the same. Well, that might keep him going for another season because I know he keeps to it and to retire every season. So it might, it might just keep him going another one. Well, I guess it's just hard to stop doing it if you enjoy doing it. Well, when we interview him each time and he talks about, uh, ask a question, you know, what, what would you like to do if you weren't a paddler? And he said, no, I'm a paddler. That, that, that's, that's, that's a perfect <laughs> answer. must be annoying for you when you ask that kind of question and he answers that, but I think it's a great answer. I prefer honesty. Someone who can go as fast as anyone, Samuel Hanans, 28 years old. He in, trains here. But he flew down the course because he messed up the top of the course, I believe, last year and then just decided to take it apart and it was, it was extraordinary in the second section. Yeah, I think he came third with two touches last That's year. That's right, yeah. yeah. Pushing off the wall. There. Unfortunately, the tail of his boat kind of touched the rock, so it didn't and go as fast as he probably wanted to, but it's still, still good. Well, even exactly the same time as Michael Kirk on that first split. That's great. If you can put together a second, I remember doing the commentary uh, last year with uh, Stott and Bailey, and they were just going, "Wow, wow, wow." to be a second half. And uh, just doing good upstream, tighter than Mike Kirk, probably as good as Lucien. So he should be up on that second split, and he is almost a second. Really tight on that upright. Tight on that up left off. as well. Yeah, the that was really nice. He's flying on that bottom part. Yeah, just held onto that pole in the upright. Gave him a really nice exit. Where's gonna set a new awesome. time of reference? And it's the best time of the day so far. Half of a second faster than Boris Neveu, who had the lead in the semi-final. So Samu will probably guarantee. Well, that's certainly going to put the pressure on the, the next spot. seven athletes down. Yeah, definitely. I think we'll, we'll probably see him on the podium with that. Great run. Well, Spanish will probably have a medal in the K1 men class with that time. And the next one is another Spanish K1 man who trains all year round with Samu and who's really fast here as well. You and Crespo. Well, so far, if you look at his pedigree in the 2009 Worlds, he was made the final, he came eighth. 2012 World Cup came seventh here. 2013 World Cup came 13th. On the World Cup scene, apart from that, doesn't make many finals, but here he certainly feels at home, as you mentioned. Yeah, he's got a really radical style, so it's either he goes really fast or kind of go off the line and, and do mistakes, but I guess that here, yeah. He can do well and he knows it and wow, that looked great. Pushed against the wall just like Samu but didn't touch the rock so it was probably faster. Is, is the course consistent? Do we always have the same water at the same place or is it bobbling around a bit? Oh, it's slightly down on the spit, sorry. Um, it's probably bobbling around a bit but that's that's new slalom. Like, but it's quite consistent compared to many other places where it's changing. We've got some work oh, to do. Lost, lost a second here. or two there, and he was down on the split. Yeah, he might probably be like three seconds down now. Yeah, but two and a half, but that that looked really fast. Yeah, it kept it nice and tight. Just tucking the end in the upstream and. Trying to 
just make up for the time he had lost and it's not gonna make it. She's like really low in that last upstream and it's over, he knows it. Well, the crowd is still cheering, but it's not gonna be, not gonna be a medal winning performance today. Yeah, it's just a came apart a little bit at the end there. It's really hard to, when you know you're down a little bit, to squeeze that extra bit of time. Yeah, I had a pretty good run and did one mistake in, uh, in that right upstream that we just see here and then tried to make up for the time. And sometimes when you try to go as fast as you can, you just, you just lose the track with what you should do and and get offline and lose some more time. It's like a vicious circle. Next to go, 26-year-old Sebastian Schubert, ranked number two in the world at the moment. Where's number one? Well, Fabian Dorfler is uh, studying uh, for his masters. And so he had uh, commitments this weekend, so he's not gonna be here, but he's gonna be in Augsburg. Let's see how Sebastian Schubert can uh, put it together. He won the overall classification to the World Cup last year and has put some good results so far this season. He's third in Tatum. Yeah, there's only uh, one German in the final. It's, uh, it's quite weird, usually we have uh, three of them. They're like really strong nation in the K1 men world ranking. But uh, he's doing good so far. Probably slightly slower than uh, Samu, but. Most of them, I'm speaking to most of the team, he's 1.4 seconds down. Uh, most teams have been uh, just studying for the exams. Hannes Egner has been uh, doing exam oh, work, and uh, Alexander Grimm doing exam work in the last month. They haven't been to one of the few teams that haven't been to Deep Creek. And just powered that around there. 50 second penalty. Yeah, he was uh, really tight in that downstream in the eddy, uh, just below the bridge, and uh, I'm not sure that all his head went through the gates, probably just chucked the head underneath it, but was totally in the gates. Can appeal. The Germans will probably uh, check with the video judgment to make sure and see if he was in the gates or not. Really solid finish to the run. Yeah, that would well, have if been. If you take your 50 off, 90. he's still going to be out of first place, though. Yeah. I would be second, and he doesn't agree with the judgment. Well, we'll see. Hopefully, they will just put the slow motion. Yeah, here we go. I wouldn't like to be the judge, but I think that on the slow motion, you can't really. But can you, if you, if you put a the perfect camera, can you, can you say to the nearest millimeter that that's the line, that's in, in or out? Well, it's really hard because you never really have the perfect camera angle. Like we just had like three slow motions, and it's hard to tell. So the idea is you don't put yourself in a position where the judges have to make the call. Easy for me to say. Fabien Lefebvre, uh, the French-sounding American. Uh, Fabien was uh, really good in this semi-final run, just looking smooth, and he has this special technique that uh, that kind of like he made things move forward for the sport. I think back in the days, and uh, he's always stayed at the top paddlers. So I'm looking forward to see the rest of his run because he's looking good so far fast up right there yeah another giant of the sport I don't know they, they mentioned before he's got what, well, six world touch. championship medals two Olympic medals it's and he did all categories like he specialized in uh, K1 but just recently picked up the C1 uh, two years ago and did the C2 with Danny Gargo while he was racing in the oh, in the yeah. French team and that was tight and fast. Yeah, it's really nice. He did uh, did that down in the eddy on, at the bridge on a draw, which not many people have done. Well, he's two seconds off the pace. That would put him that would put him exactly on bronze medal target. Let's see how he goes last Let's see if he can uh, do a good bottom part. 
Got some tight in 21 there. Might be a little bit too much time to make up. Well, time references, as you see on your screen, it's 92. It's not going to be first place. No. Fourth place. Didn't manage to make up for the time he lost. But the fact that he's, he makes most semi-finals in C1 and K1, he's always never wastes his weekend, does he? He's always full out. Oh no, it's, it's a, like a pretty full-on weekend for him because he he raced K1 and C1 on the same days. So it's already quite hard when you double, but when you kind of have to race both class in the same day, it gets really tricky. But it's a choice. It's his third run so far. Yeah, but they're trying hard for it, so they're able to do it. Yeah, I'm not sure if he did both of his runs in both classes yesterday, but it would make it his seventh run for the weekend. Wow, that is Popiela, 27, yeah, 27 years old. He started the season quite slowly, but came fifth last time out in Prague. Uh, last year here, he was 21st. The year before, he was He's really eighth. aggressive here. I don't know if it's uh, really fast. Uh, when you try to push too hard, the boat is not gliding on the water, but kind of like you kind of push the water with it. So we'll see. Doesn't look as smooth as Samu and is well, it's, one it's still in touch there. Only one point two down on the top. Yeah, the Polish—they're all really powerful paddlers, and let's see if that's going to pay off. So while since we've had a, not had a Polacek in the in the final, we actually had two uh, two had Lucas and Gregor in the semi-finals, but uh, the other two brothers didn't make the trip. Well, it's, a, it's a long way to go down to Spain and then back up to Augsburg, so... Well, falling off a little bit of the page, just shows how quick that uh, Samuel Hendens was. Yeah, nice tight upright there. Just Is Good bottom section though, so he might make up for the time he lost, but that won't be enough to challenge. 94.18 is the target time for France. No. Moves into fifth position. And uh, Samu has almost secured the middle. Almost. Because yeah, I'd there's say. only three competitors left, and. Uh, the next one, Vit Prindish from the Czech Republic, has done a really, really good international season so far. I've got second at the Europeans, and this was pretty impressive. Lee Valley was second, Tachin was 15th, Prague was 8th. But yeah, as you said, he, he can put forward some incredibly fast runs. Yeah, siesta time. So far, we've seen all the finalists happily negotiate through the third or first three or four gates fairly straightforwardly, no great mistakes. Yeah, with, uh, in the K1 men, they can go on a swap stroke in the, down in the Eddy, the gate number three, whereas we saw that some uh, lefty C ones had more trouble to turn around the gate because they can't go as tight. Yeah, Vit had a little bit of trouble there. It was a little bit late on sticky fingers. Got a bit caught up. And he's 1.3 seconds down. But he can definitely make up for that time. Probably not as tight as he wanted to in that right upstream, but he still stayed in the hole, so it's not terrible. Well, he's still in touch. Is only one point. Oh, he's stuck a bit there. Was well, very tight here. Probably lost like a little bit of time because he he had to wait not to touch the inside gate. But I'm not too worried. It 
he's looking good so far and got a 50 seconds penalty. Uh, that doesn't help matters. I'm not too sure where because I didn't really see, but we'll probably see the slow mo or what the. He's been given on 18. So he's going to be in touch. Eight, 18, so that was the upstream left where he was tight. Wouldn't, wouldn't uh, not convinced about that, but it wouldn't really affect, it wouldn't affect the first place anyway. No, but... Uh, well, Samuel Hernandez has a medal, which is great for the Spanish public. I know it's, it's the gate they 12 gave him like, gate um, 12, like, like Sebastian. exactly like Sebastian Schubert. Okay. Yeah, it's hard to tell from that angle, but I'm sure the uh, Czechs will be discussing that with the video judge, and as well, we'll as have to wait for the official, official results. So, Sebastian Combo, 27 years old, I suppose best known for 2007 when in Brazil when he won the World Championships. Yeah, and then had a pretty hard time to qualify for the French senior team, but we have many many strong K1 men, so this year made the team and uh, and he's in the final and, and charging. Last time he was in the final here was in two, th no sorry, last time he competed here I believe was 2010 World Cup where he came 21st, so it's a great result so far today. Must be frustration being French because you can be like number 8 or 10 in France and, and be well up there in the world of all. Yeah. Yeah, so much depth and yeah, he's flying, I think another Another guy, quite up, light look. and dynamic, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's frustrating, and uh, that's one of the reasons why we have uh, pretty good uh, Frenchies that team. decide to use their second nationality when they have a, a parent or someone from another country. To Would you ever compete for Great Britain? Ah, it's raining too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's, he's still up on this. That, consolidated that lead there. Line down the course. This is a really impressive run. Squeezes that exit nice and tight. Should give him a good like entry here. Yeah. Charging in between the gates and paddling as hard as he can, and I think he can challenge the move right now. This is going to be really close. 92.18 to go for. This will be. This will be his. Going to be close. No. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's a victory for him anyway. Yeah, yeah, he's, I think he hasn't medaled for uh, quite a few years now, and uh, it's just amazing. And yeah, it's not like you mentioned, he's on the medal podium. And today. we can see some Frenchies uh, just across the river. Uh, Seb's girlfriend and, and his club partners that are like about to jump in the water, maybe? Or maybe not. Well, absolutely delighted with it. They got us, for the rest of the Frenchies have to sprint up to the top again. Yeah, is this his first World Cup for the season? Um, yeah. uh, he was in London. Okay. Next competitor was also in London. Yeah, Boris Neveu and uh, actually win London's World Cup. And uh, he's uh, really strong this year. Really solid paddling style and not taking risks but just going fast. Yes, still have fins on his bait. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. They, they've been working on that for the past two years, and uh, I think that now they just want to keep the fins under the boats, and, and they like it. Although they have to portage, even when there's a conveyor belt next to the slalom course. Uh, of course. So well, see where they are. Smooth so far. A little bit caught up in the well, eddy up on the of corner, well. but yeah. France are doing extraordinarily well. Yeah, it's part of the generation of French paddlers who had experienced many uh, selection races here and, and many training camps, so he knows Seo. He was a uh, vice world champion in Seo just behind uh, Peter Kauser back in uh, 2009, so he likes the and course here and, and he's half a second up. And uh, Samu, who's, uh, who's been his uh, training partner, they're in the same uh, area, so they used to train together when they were, uh, since they were probably like 10 years old. Wow. And they 
Okay, Samuel flew down this last section, so it'll be interesting to see. This, this will be tight. As I mentioned, 92.18 is a reference time. Oh! oh. What a race. 0.6 seconds up. Looks delighted with that. Yeah, I think he's happy with that. And, uh, well, Boris and Sam were like best friends, so I think they'll be pretty stoked to share a podium together. And a uh, good day for the French K1 men as well. Great day. Yeah, we saw like uh, the Slovak domination in the C1, Australian killed it in the C1 women, and uh, and Frenchies aren't doing bad in the K1 men. But some great racing today, some really close, exciting stuff with uh, Jess Fox really showing everyone how it should be done in the C1 women. Yeah. And the Slovaks showing you how to do in the C1 men, and the, uh, the Frenchies and their mates showing you how to do in the K1. No, it was. Uh, it's really good. Good to watch. Great. So your program for the rest of the weekend? Yeah. Well, Today, what are you doing the rest of the day? I guess I'll have to race um, tomorrow. <laughs> so the rest of the day, you chill out of it? Yeah, probably. Gonna pick up some creek boats and uh, and make sure I'm ready for what's coming next after the World Cup. That's great. So uh, today you've been uh, watching us live from the Olympic course in uh, Parc del Segre. Here are the results. Spain first, gold medal Samuel Hernandez. France second and third, boys and nephews Sebastian Combo. Michael Kirk just missing out, taking fourth place for Switzerland and Australia. Great to see Lucien Delfo back again. And it, it's, it's really good to see everyone on the podium. Christian, your, your thoughts about today? Yeah, I think that was some incredible racing there by Samuel and Boris and Sebastian. Um, those guys were flying down and, you know, showing the rest how it is done. And you were briefly uh, not telling you how to do your job, but please don't hit gate number 20 tomorrow. You've seen it uh, well, 30 times. I'll try to, but uh, looks tricky. <laughs> it does. That's, well, that's coming to the end from us. I'm Matthew Leighton, you and you, man. Christian Fabres, thank you very, very much, and we'll see you again tomorrow lunchtime. Two more finals, women's K1s, the C2s. That's about it from us. Thank you for listening, thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Take care. Thank you. Yeah, bye. Thanks.